Do you have a moment, Clive? What is it? It's the Duke, unsurprisingly. His eminence has assumed full control of the garrison and put every able-bodied man to work on the fortifications. The town was left all but unguarded, so Philippe was compelled to form a citizen's watch to fill the void. And though my dear boys have been characteristically willing to assist him in this, they want for bodies. So I was wondering if you would lend them your strength, that the people of Northreach might sleep easier, if only for a few nights. Of course. Whatever you need. Thank you, Clive. What would I do without you? Philippe told me he had men stationed at... Where can I find the mistress of this establishment? Here, my lady. To whom do I have the pleasure of speaking? My name is Sabine. And it is my displeasure to be the daughter of the Duke of Oriflam, who I understand is causing you and your town no small amount of trouble. I wish to speak to you about what might be done. Very well. Let us speak. I trust you'll forgive me, Clive. Absolutely. Our conversation can wait. Please, proceed. As you know, my father is a most overbearing and supercilious man, and I join you in objecting to his every action. Indeed, I owe you my thanks for continuing to argue against his reckless plans. Yet I fear he is not one to be swayed by reason. No. He must be made to face the consequences of his actions. And who would make him do this? I would. Myself and several other like-minded individuals. Were you to join us, we would surely have the strength to drive him from Northreach for good. Does that not seem a trifle... drastic? Drastic action is precisely what is called for. Unless you are content to see your people downtrodden and dispossessed. My father would have it that citizens exist only to serve the Empire. That they should be forced to make every sacrifice to ensure her revival. But he is wrong. It is not the people who must serve the Empire, but the Empire who must serve her people. <sighs> He's always been like this. Scornful of the opinions of anyone he judged beneath him. But he cannot be allowed to ride roughshod over the common folk any longer. We must fight him. By all possible means. Fight him? No. My purpose is to quell the tension in Northreach. Not to stoke it. Respectfully, my lady. Our only chance of saving this town depends upon every one of us uniting against our common enemy. Your father and his followers included. While I understand your frustrations, I cling to the hope that he may yet be won round. False hope, I assure you. But I see that your mind is made up. I shall bother you no longer. If you will extend me the same courtesy. I bid you good day. She certainly has spirit. Indeed. But unfortunately for us, that spirit is only likely to harden the Duke's resolve. Which may be enough to seal the fate of this town. Not that she cares. This is all about her and her father. Families. I'm sorry, where were we? Ah, yes. I was about to tell you of Philippe's plans for the town watch. But perhaps it's better that you heard them from him. I believe he's in the market, if you'd be so kind as to seek him out. Right away. It's just a pity I cannot join you. I'd like to see the two of you in action together. Intent to abandon... Please! I beseech you. If you are a true son of Northreach, you must fight to defend your home. That's exactly what I am doing, milady. Or trying to, at least. The land is crawling with fiends, and someone has to keep watch. Even when our true enemy is hiding in the garrison? Fine. You're not the only able-bodied man in Northreach. Thank you so much for your help.
She cornered you too, then? Could hardly get a word in edgeways. Like father, like daughter, eh? She made an uninvited appearance at the Vale earlier, hoping to convince the Dame to join her in fermenting rebellion. <laughs> I bet that went well. Her ladyship seems to have a way with people. Anyway, what brings you here? Our mutual friend thought you might welcome some help. Oh, she did, did she? <laughs> right as always. In fact, you're just the man. We've had some reports, you see. Sightings of, uh, you know what. They're back. Seems that way. All over, too. We haven't been able to confirm anything yet, but if you're willing, you could go and see what's what. Right. Where should I look? You know Grieger's Weep? One of the sightings places them somewhere on its shores. I'm on my way. Thank you, Clyth. I'll look into one of the other sightings. Let's rendezvous back here later. Come on. Fly, Ambrosia. Let a test, Ultima. Clive, it's me. Are you all right? I am. But it seems the reports were true. The thralls have returned. I dispatched the few that I found, though. Well, that's something, I suppose. But what were they doing south of town? They all came from the north last time. We might be able to fend off an attack from one side or the other, but from both? Do you have eyes in the north? Some. I should probably go and have a look, though, just to be sure. Now, you head back to Northridge. I want you there just in case war breaks out while I'm away. What do you mean? Her ladyship's been busy working her magic on the townspeople. Stirring up ill feeling towards her father. But she'll have her marching on the barracks if we're not careful. What? <sighs> this is exactly what the Dane was afraid of. I'll do what I can to calm things down. Be careful out there, all right? Don't worry, I'm not like you. One sniff of those things and I'm running back to town screaming blue murder. Do you not see, father? The people of Northreach have given enough and only a fool would ask for more. Listen to me, Sabine. Where would our people be without their country, hmm? The Empire is their sword and their shield. It is she that ensures they can live without fear. And now she teeters on the brink. Without their sword, 
How will the people fight? Without their shield, how will they protect their kin? Can the unarmed stand against the advancing hordes? No. But there is yet hope. A new shield, a new sword. A new empire. We can rebuild Sandbrek, just as great Grieger wills it. Perhaps we could, father. But we don't want to. Not if it is built on the broken backs of the people. Please, let us not quarrel in the street. You must see that no good will come of this. Our fight is not with each other, but with the threat that draws ever closer to our gates. A threat that your sword has yet to rid us of, your eminence. You will hold your tongue, whore! You may have filled my daughter's head with your heresy, but I will not be corrupted! Corrupted? Your daughter's opinions are her own, as you would know if you had ever deigned to listen to her. At least I hope they are your opinions, and not posturing born of a family feud. Northreach deserves better than that. Northreach deserves better than you, Carla. Yes, I know who you are. The slut of Twinside who bedded a branded. <sighs> Jealous, are you? That a woman might choose a bearer over a pious man of Grieger. Clive! I met a swarm of thralls coming south from Oriflam. Hundreds of them. Too many to count. Oh, oh, fuck you. No. Work on the fortifications has scarcely begun. We will retreat to Cair Norvant and there make our stand. Did you hear me? That was an order. While this is but a heartfelt plea, let us make our stand here and protect our homes. Protect those that we love. Together, for Northreach! You heard the dame? What are we waiting for? Pikemen to the gates, archers to the roofs. Quickly, come on! But she is but a common. Whore, yes. And we'd follow her to the gates of hell. The men have their orders, and they look like following them. I got them spaced out at regular intervals. Whichever direction the thralls strike from, there'll be someone there to meet them. Thank you, Philippe. Rest assured, the people will play their part. The herbalist has donated her stock of medicines to me. Should any of your men be injured, take them to the Vale. We'll see to them there. Thank you, my lady. I will. I'll play my part too. You still want for numbers. Unlike the enemy. I only hope I can go some way to evening the odds. Philippe, can I leave the south in your hands? I doubt the thralls by the lake were the last of their number. Of course. I'll lead a party down that way so we don't get taken by surprise. What about you? I'll make my way up the road to Oriflam. I've fought a few of these things. And while I can't promise to hold them all back, I should be able to thin the herd. All right. But take care. Thank you. Both of you. You can thank us when it's over. Till then, madame.
No use calling Ambrosia now. That looks to be the last of them. I wonder how the others fared. Better hurry back to town. Come on, Toggle. Clive, it's good to see you. And you. The road to Oriflam is clear. How did you and your men fare? Well, we ended up fighting for our lives down by the lake. Took a few nicks, but nothing the girls at the Vale can't put right. Glad to hear it. Well, it seems we've survived. For the time being, at least. I thank you both for answering the call. You were right. And I was wrong. About everything. I had thought that the only way to unite the people was under the banner of Empire. 
that without a strong hand to guide them, they would drift apart, to be borne hither and yon by the eddying currents of fate. But you brought them together, not by force, nor by the exercise of goddess-given authority, but by simply being one of them. By knowing what they feel, because you feel it yourself. Our purpose was ever the same, Your Eminence. You were merely distracted by a loftier vision of empire and glory, while our eyes beheld matters closer to home. You have the right of it again, as did you, Sabine. His radiance said it himself. Sandbreck is naught without her citizens. I forgot that. And I am sorry. I'm sorry too, Father. I should never have taken things so far. I only wanted you to understand how the people felt. How I felt. But my anger got the better of me. Do not blame yourself, my dear. This was my doing. I should have listened to you. To all of you. Your Eminence. Your Ladyship, I do not doubt that you came here with the best of intentions, but I believe the same could be said of us all. We all want safety, security, prosperity, not just for Northreach, but for the entire realm. And we may yet achieve it. If only we work together. Will you join us in this? Yes. We shall. Thank you, Your Eminence. Now that that is settled, I must go and see to the wounded. The Vale's doors are always open to any soldier in need of relief. And today there are more than ever before. Madam Isabel is a rare soul indeed. In these dark times, I see... That it is not men like me who should lead the realm, but women like her. You're right. If only I'd listened to her when I had the chance. Forgive me for saying so, my lady, but you still do. The dame said it herself. We can turn things around. We just have to work together. And that goes for you, too. You're one of us now. One of you? Well said, Captain. Let this be a new beginning, not only for Sandbreck, but for us. Well, since there's nothing more to be done here, I should see if Isabel needs any help moving the wounded. Can we get you anything? There's no need to worry anymore. I saw several soldiers being carried to the vet. How goes the treatment of the wounded? I'd be happy to man one end of a stretcher if it would help. <laughs> You've helped quite enough for one day, Clive. Thank you. Don't mention it. Oh, but I must. After all you've done for this town, it is the very least you deserve. Tell me, if Northreach had fallen, what would you have done? A woman of your means could find a home anywhere in the realm, but I sense you would rather have died here. It's a long story. For you, madame, I have all the time in the world. Very well. Long ago, I had a life in the Crystalline Dominion. I was Carla then, courtesan to the nobility. So sought after was I that it was only they who could afford my time. Alas, those halcyon days were not to last. 
For naive as I was, I fell in love with a bearer. He was my master's guard. The gentlest man I have ever known. After they discovered us together, he was whipped bloody and forbidden from ever looking at me again. And so we fled. Not that we had anywhere to flee to. We wandered, aimless and starving. Half dreading, half praying that the next day would be our last. Until we found ourselves here, in Northreach. It was the veil that took us in. That fed us, clothed us, and healed our hurts. Those that could be healed, at least. My love was already too far gone. He passed away. He did. Not long after we arrived. But at least we were able to share a few moments of peace before the end. It was the greatest gift I have ever received. But the generosity of this town and her people did not end there. The men and women of the Vale supported me through my grief. Shared in it, though I was still a stranger to them. They treated me like a sister. And so I swore that I would always do the same. That I would return the kindness that Northreach showed me. That I would repay my debt to the Vale. Thank you, Isabel, for sharing this with me. <laughs> You're a lot like him, you know. Perhaps that is why I have such a soft spot for you. Never stop fighting, Clive. And I shan't either. I know that it will not be easy to keep Northreach together. But our efforts will be rewarded. Just look at us now. The people, the soldiers, even the Duke of Oriflam and his daughter. All united in defense of this town that we have come to call our home. And what of you? Can we count on your support too? Always. Here to help me pack. Thanks, but I'll be traveling light. I'm almost finished already, in fact. You're really going to go through with this, then? I am. But before I go, there is one small issue I'd like your assistance with. Well, two, in fact. If it's within my power to help you, I will. It's the children. I refuse to let them share in my disgrace. And if I leave them here, they surely will. Our friendship would see them ostracized forever. But I can't take them with me either. I can think of only one place where they are certain to be safe and provided for and loved. The hideaway. Of course. The children would be more than welcome. Thank you, Clive. I will not forget this. Lubor, are you still here? What is it, Ferda? You look pale. There's been a flood in the Velcroy, a damn big one. The League of Outlaws encampment was completely submerged in ether. What? Every last one of the bastards has turned, and they're headed this way. Bandits are one thing, but Akashic bandits are quite another. The town guard won't stand a chance against them. We need to evacuate. There's no time to lose. Further, gather the men. The Akashic may strike at any moment. We must make ready to cover the townspeople's escape. Well, what are you waiting for? 
Yes, my lord. Clive, change of plan. The children stay with me for now. I need you to find Conrad and Natalie. Tell them to prepare for a full and immediate evacuation. Understood. I'll do what I can to convince everyone else. Wish me luck. What's an You have to listen to me. They're coming. Why do they always have to make such a... Huh? It's you. What do you want, Lord Underhill? To pass on an important message. There's been an ether flood out in the Velcroy. The camp where the so-called League of Outlaws were gathering has been swallowed. They're no longer just bandits. They're Akashic now, and they could be here at any moment. You need to begin preparing for a full-scale evacuation right away. Oh, do we? And who was it who gave you this disturbing news, might I ask? Lubor, perhaps? The man spreading the same poison out in the square as we speak. You may believe his lies, my lord, but we know better. But why would he lie about something like this? Some twisted attempt at revenge, perhaps. If he had not been unmasked, he may well have been elected our leader. A great honor for one of his kind. One he might well feel aggrieved at having been denied. Lord Underhill, forgive me, but it has become all too evident where your sympathies lie. Lubor cannot be trusted, and neither, therefore, can you. You may not trust me, but for the sake of your people, ask yourselves if there is any chance that this is true. There isn't. You can be certain of that. Now be off with you. You're making a mistake. It's no use. Words will not move them. Then we must find another way to ensure Dalamel's survival. You're right. Let's speak to Lord Ferda. Uh, I think we'd better shut up. What's Lubor raving about now? Lord Ferda. Sid. What's wrong? I went to warn Conrad and Natalie about the Akashic, but they wouldn't listen. They've convinced themselves that nothing Lubor says can be trusted. The bloody fools. Which means the town guard can't be counted on for support. But I can. If there's anything I can do to help you defend Dalamil, you only have to ask. I appreciate it. Sid! Ferda! I've been looking for you everywhere! Victor? I thought you'd left. I couldn't abandon a friend in need. And Blue Boy is in need at this very moment. Come quickly. You have to believe me. The Akashic are coming. They don't eat. They don't sleep, they don't tire, and they don't care who they kill. They're unlike anything that's come before. There won't be no parley, no mercy granted! We may have saved the town once, but this is different. I do not ask that you forgive me, but please believe me. If you do not run, you will die. You will all fucking die! Huh? <laughs> You'd like that, wouldn't you, bearer? Yeah, with us out of the way, your kind will be free to claim Dalamil for yourselves. It's you who should run! <laughs> Run, Bearer! Yeah, yeah. yeah run! run. Yeah. Far, Just far away! Run. Yeah. Run. Yeah. Run. Yeah. Just go on, Bearer! Yeah. 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 Yeah.
on, eh? Go on, go on. Just go, just go. Just go. Just go. Wait, someone's coming. Stop! You're hurting him! What did Lubor ever do to you? Hmm? He solves all your stupid problems, and he keeps all of you safe. You know there's nothing he wouldn't do for this town. Who was it who made that cleaver you use every day, Conrad? And what about your counting table, Natalie? Who fixed that? Whose men make sure the streets are clean so all your boots don't get dirty? Who spends all day every day making sure things run smoothly around here? And none of you ever say thank you, ever! But did Lubor ever complain? Well, does he ever stop smiling? He keeps this whole place going! And you act like it doesn't even exist! Lubo, we have heard enough. No! Wait! We will not run. The town guard will not abandon the very place it is sworn to protect. And I will not give up for lost the stores that we labored so hard to fill. <sighs> so tell us, how do you propose we deal with these Akashic of yours? We won't run, but we will fight. All right, then. Fine. Gather round if you don't want to die. Allow me to explain the situation. The ether flood occurred near the village of Cheratina, deep in the Velcroy. The place had been abandoned for years, until the League of Outlaws decided to make it their base of operations. Now they're all turned, and if the scouts' reports are correct, heading in this direction. They are mindless monsters, driven only by hate and rage. And they are utterly unpredictable. With the bandits, we at least knew how and where they were likely to attack. When these creatures come, Delamil will have the bitterest fight it has ever faced on its hands. The town guard will muster at the north gate. The rest of us will take the south. Both forces will provide men to serve as scouts and messengers, ready to spread word of the size and nature of the Akashic force as soon as it is spotted. And as soon as it has been, we will converge on its position and see that it is driven back from Dalamil at all costs. Conrad, can I count on the support of the town guard? Always. I leave the selection and coordination of the messengers in your hands, Victor, and the command of our men in yours, Ferda. If you would both be so kind, consider it done. As you wish. Natalie, I would ask that you and your people have the townsfolk barricade themselves inside the bathhouse. And tell the merchant not to waste time securing anything beside the essentials. Preserving life is our one and only concern. As long as we survive, it doesn't matter what trinkets we might lose. Our riches can be regained, 
And if anyone doubts that, let it be known that the Briar's Kiss stands ready to cover any losses. Very well. I shall tell them. Where do I fit into this plan? Where else but the most perilous place of all? I would like you to travel to the home of our erstwhile League of Outlaws, Cheritina itself. The main host is most likely still there, and Dalamil will not be safe until it is eradicated root and branch. A little gardening. How pleasant. <sighs> I doubt it. I have a feeling these weeds will be particularly stubborn. Luckily, so am I. So you are. All right, then. We all know what we have to do. Now it's simply a matter of doing it. For Dalamil. Looks like everyone's ready. I'd better not keep them waiting. But what's waiting for us inside?
The League is disbanded. I should get back to Dalamil and see how the others fared. All the Akashic we were able to find have been dealt with. Seems that might be the last of them. The last of them here, perhaps. Lubo, Sir Clive has returned. Clive! What news from Charitina? It's done. Root and branch. I knew you wouldn't let me down. Thank you, my lord. Friends, the Horde has been driven back. The Akashic have been defeated. And we need not fear the arrival of any more, thanks to Clive. Victory is ours. We bloody did it. We saved Dalamil. Lubor, allow me to apologize. After all you have done for this town, we should never have doubted you. But we did, and for that we are truly sorry. We only hope that you can forgive us. We need you, Lubor. Dalimil needs you. So, if you would still like to be considered for the position of mayor, you have our backing. You do remember that I'm a bearer, don't you? We do. But that is not a stain on your character. It is a stain on ours. We thought only of what we perceived bearers to be, not what you truly are. The man who saved Dalimil twice over. I see. But I will only accept your proposal on two conditions. Name them. Firstly, that you will both do everything in your power to rally your people to my cause. If the Town Guard and the Merchants League do not accept my leadership, it will be doomed from the start. Unity is the key to defending Dalamil, and I do not doubt that we shall need to call on our combined strength again. When that time comes, I will expect us all to pull together just as we did today. Of course. You have our word. And secondly, you will accept that if I am to lead you, the mistreatment of bearers must end here in Dalamil. Any bearer within our walls shall be afforded the same rights as any other citizen. They will not be judged by what they are, but who they are. As we failed to do, and came so close to losing everything. We agree to your conditions. And we have only one in return. That you continue to work for the good of Dalimil, as you always have. Condition accepted. Well then. It seems my mayorship is all but confirmed. Do I get some sort of special hat? How fickle fate can be. Not so long ago, I had resigned myself to leaving Dalamil in disgrace. And now, I find myself her leader. Here for everything. Lubo, about the children. Fear not, you are of course relieved of your responsibility. I would sooner face another horde of Akashic than see them brought up as outlaws. I'll make sure they're safe here. I don't doubt that you will. And not just the children, but everyone in Dalamel. I'll do my best. 
Can't have all your hard work going to waste. 